So this is going to be a thing. It will happen, it will be over, it will be rather short, and if I can get this light to not fall over. Anyway, um, this week is going to be a little bit disoriented and not super well put together because the last two weeks have been like that. Um, so mathematically, the only thing that I've done over the past two weeks is I've been thinking about a mathematical object that is sort of the, I don't know, it's kind of like a party trick. I don't find it to be well motivated. I just find that it has a lot of really cool properties and you can talk about those pretty quickly, but there's not really anything like snappy about this thing. It's good to know that it exists. It's good to know that it has the properties that it does, but in my experience, it hasn't really come up anywhere else in math. It's just, you know, like, here's a cool thing, sort of kind of math stuff. Um, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about a Mobius strip. And why I've been thinking about this, because I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I was very busy over the past two weeks and didn't get a lot of sleep. And in order to meditate for about an hour every day after work the past over the past two weeks, I ended up sculpting well, a Mobius strip in dreams. Um, so that is how we got here. So what is Mobius strip? What does that mean? Uh, the easiest way to define a Mobius, uh, <laughs> the easiest way to define a Mobius strip is geometrically and to do so with an equivalence relation and paying attention to some orientation. So what this looks like is if you have a square, we can define an equivalence relation on two of the edges of the square that are opposite to each other, such that the two sides are identified with each other, but they're identified with each other with opposite orientations. So that just means like, for example, this corner is going to be equivalent to this corner in a Mobius strip. So this geometric version of defining this topological space isn't super intuitive. It doesn't let you sort of mess around with a Mobius strip in a really easy way, at least at first glance, because this is a gluing diagram and you can do stuff on the gluing diagram, but it's not as satisfying as actually like having the thing present. So there's two ways that you can think about this. If you're someone who really likes computation and really ugly formulas, then you can actually write out a parameterization of the Mobius strip and these three formulas will give you the parameterization of the Mobius strip in three-dimensional space. Alternatively, we can just do what the gluing diagram tells us to do with a piece of paper, but not that piece of paper because that piece of paper is too small. So we're just gonna fix that really quick. And after making the paper a little bit bigger and messing with it and getting that twist in there and gluing things together. And after all that, we get this twist, which is a representation of the Mobius band. So given that this is just some mathematical party trick, at least in my experience, um, I should probably talk about all of its fancy properties that make it a trick worthy object. Um, the first one being is that it is one sided. So. If you're looking at a two-dimensional shape and you want to flip it over, it has two sides, right? Um, that's not what happens on the Mobius strip. The Mobius strip is just one side. And how can we prove that if we just like poke one of the sides and rotate the Mobius strip while leaving our finger on that side, we'll end up being able to traverse the entirety of the surface area of the Mobius strip without lifting our finger, unlike other two-dimensional shapes where you have to actually flip over the object in order to touch the other side. Um, for the Mobius strip, there is no other side. It's just one side. The other thing that comes with this that is a little bit less clear if you do the same thing, but on one of the edges of the Mobius strip, which there's only one edge, so the edge of the Mobius strip, you'll be able to traverse all of the boundary of the Mobius strip without lifting your finger. So I'm definitely in the camp of people that are not, I mean, now don't get me wrong, every time I see a Mobius strip, I'm sort of like tantalized with like, ooh, that's a cool math thing. And I think that's the point of why people use the Mobius strip as an example, but 
Also, as a math person, the Mario strip always comes to mind as like the like party trick of like, hey, this thing is from topology and topology's cool and I'm gonna give you no other context about topology and you're gonna move on with life very confused about what that word means. Um, so one of those things that people like to bring up with the Moia strip is that if you cut it in half, you get this really twisty band, but then if you cut it into three equal pieces or cut a third of the way down on the strip and those two things are equivalent because of the whole like one-sided object, one edge object thing going on. Okay, let's just post chalkboard Nathan here. Uh, turns out those things are not equivalent and they are only equivalent in the cases of cutting the Mobius strip in half or cutting it into three pieces. Uh, I discovered this in I, well, like in the next like two minutes, you'll see it, but I discovered this while doing an N equals eight case, um, but we'll get there in a second. So yeah. Uh, What's on the board is wrong. That is where we are. Um, but anyway, uh, when you cut a third of the way down, you get the like weird stringy loop, but you also get a link of a Mobius strip inside of that loop. Um, or not inside, but attached to that loop. That's what I meant to say. Um, and so one of the things that I was thinking about and one of the things that I wanted to bring up in this video that I don't know the answer to, but I thought it would be cool to just like throw it out there because I have been working like a dog the past two weeks and also am now starting to get a little sick and I just wanted to think about this thing. So I thought about it for a little while and now I want to share it with you. Um, the question is, what happens when you cut an nth of the way down the Mobius strip? And so yeah, what I mean here is not an nth of the way down, but into n equal parts. What does that do to the, the Mobius strip as a space, and what is the re resist and what is the resultant bundle of I don't know bands. I guess I guess it would be a bundle of bands because it's sort of like a weird half link thing going on, where instead of just having a half link where everything's one dimensional, you've got these links that are made out of these strips. Um, also a half link, I think that's what it's called, H-O-P-F link is just two circles that have been joined in three dimensions, but we're talking about things that have like width and are linked and joined together and twisted in three dimensions. Um, so on the board right now, I'm going to go ahead and cut like, I don't know, like maybe an, a seventh or an eighth, I don't know. I'm just gonna cut that out really quick just to give you a visual of what I am rambling about. Yeah, that is, that's all I've got for you today. I feel gross and so I'm gonna go lay down because I don't wanna feel gross all week. Other thing, yeah, that thing that I talked about, that I spent a lot of time on, that I rambled on about, um, that problem. If you do have an answer to cutting that, leave it in the comments below. That seems like a cool thing and uh, I'll be thinking about it, but I think I'm gonna focus on like things that you can make uh, mathematically because I did Mobius strips, so there's nothing stopping me now because I already did the thing that I feel is the least motivated out of all of them. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I am totally not here right now, so I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, but as always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.